So, da sind wir wieder. Wir müssen noch mehr Päckchen austeilen, befürchte ich. Wir schauen mal, was hier unser lieber Frank so zu sagen hat, der hier immer noch rumsteht und nichts tut. What do you think is better? Magic or bird? Ich denke mal drüber nach und ich gebe dir morgen meine Antwort. Vielleicht erst übermorgen. So ein Idiot, der Frank. So, wo führt es uns denn zuerst hin? Wir müssen hier die ganze Runde fahren. Also erst nach links hier rum. Einmal um Teich. Und dann hier den Rest, wa? That's the plan. Düsen wir mal los in unserer meckernden Ziege. It's, um, Angela here. I watched the movie Gremlins the other day. Muss der Brief etwa hier hin? Die könnten ruhig dabei schreiben, auf der Karte, welche Hausnummer es ist. Egal. Ganz schön am Schneien heute. So, Jackson Street 203. Da haben wir doch was. The Kovacs family always heads to Arizona in the winter time. And who can blame them? Praktisch diese Bremsstäbe, die überstehen. So. Fancy Handwriting on this one. Somehow it's so always nice when our neighbors get a letter. Here's to you, Andy and Toby. Another satisfied customer, unless it's bills. Ich finde es schön, dass er immer seine Brille aufsetzen muss, damit er sicher gehen kann, dass da auch wirklich die richtige Nummer drauf steht. Aber beim Autofahren Brille aufsetzen, oh nö, nicht nötig. Wahrscheinlich weitsichtig der Arme. Ui, ui, ui. Ui. 
Oh, ich hätte ja gerade schon abbiegen können. Das wäre einfacher gewesen, glaube ich. Aber dann wäre ich nicht über diese schöne Brücke gefahren. Das wäre sehr schade gewesen. So, Beer Creek One. Das scheint okay, korrekt zu sein. Let's get this to its destination. Hey there. Looks like Santa's a little late this year. <laughs> That's what you get for not being a good boy, Robert Harris. Let me try to make it up to you. Take that heavy load off your hands. Uh, that must be the fire pit I ordered. Ah, now I can finally go ice fishing without freezing at the same time. <sighs> ice fishing? That sounds like a nice adventure. Well, you're in luck. Bert's out of town, so I could use someone else to talk to. Not that Bert talks that much. <laughs> uh, how about it? Tomorrow evening. Sure, let's do it. But you better make sure that fire pit is working. Perfect. I'll bring all the gear, but feel free to bring some boots. Hey, did you have a nice Christmas, by the way? Yeah, sure. A nice day off, great food. Hard to complain about that. Can't agree more. Anyways, I won't hold you up any longer. I, I need to assemble this baby. See you tomorrow, Thomas. I'll come pick you up. Da haben wir auch glatt schon einen Termin. Na gut, ich mag diese modernen Planer, die aufgrund von akustischen Reizen meine Termine in meinen Blog eintragen. Wunderbar. Die Lenkung dieses Gefährtes ist tatsächlich gewöhnungsbedürftig. Man muss einen ganz schönen Radius fahren, um um eine Kurve zu kommen. Vielleicht muss ich die Lenkung mal hier in der Kfz-Werkstatt nachstellen lassen. Ich glaube, da hätte ich reingemusst. Hier sieht aber auch alles gleich aus. Bäume, Schnee und Steine. Ach, warte, ich lasse das Ding hier mal stehen. So, wo hat der denn wohl seinen Postkasten stehen? Schön hier im Wald. Wo hat er denn seinen Postkasten? Toll, ich kann hier nicht drauf gehen. Der muss ja da irgendwo sein. Aha. Wer stellt denn sowas mitten ins Gebüsch? Da muss man sich nicht wundern, wenn die Post nicht ankommt. Mann, Mann, Mann.
So, wo sind wir denn gerade? Okay, da müssen wir noch die Runde fahren. Da gibt es einen Zeltplatz. Cool. So, jetzt mal schnell hier raus aus diesem Gebüsch. Ab, zurück in die Zivilisation. Soweit man hier von Zivilisation sprechen kann. Oh, was ist denn da passiert? Out of towners, I'm assuming. Uh, welcome to Providence Oaks. Yeah, uh, just a second, my good man. Gabriel, can you figure out what's wrong with this blasted vehicle? Give me some good news here. I mean, I'm not really a car mechanic, Mr. Price. But I know the smoke isn't a good sign. <laughs> no duh, Einstein. Say, hey, Mr. Mailman, what's your story? The name's Thomas Weiss. And yes, I do deliver the mail. Okay, then you're Thomas Weiss, mailman. And I'm Connor Price, annoyed man. Uh, Gabe, if you don't know what you're doing, then why on God's green earth are you fiddling around with that engine? Just thought I'd pop up in the hood, Mr. Price. What with the smoke and all? <laughs> It needs to vent. Needs to vent, huh? Hmm. Never have I felt more like a busted car engine. God! Dying in this podunk country ass town. Bunch of freaking yokels. Next. So, hey there. I see you've already had the privilege of the full Connor Price experience. <laughs> Quite the experience it was. <laughs> well worth the price of admission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Connor can be a bit much. Anyway, I'm Ilsa Richter, local TV segment producer turned car problem solver. And that sporting young man over there is Gabriel Serrano, local TV sound guy turned amateur mechanic. Emphasis on amateur. Hey, I never claimed to know anything about cars. Just because I used to be a studio tech, Mr. Price put me on engine duty. Anyway, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. I'm Thomas Weiss. Uh, local mail carrier turned local TV reporter's punching bag? <laughs> well, what I came to tell that local TV reporter turned mailbag puncher, I called a garage a couple miles down the road. They're on their way right now. That's great, Ilsa. You're an even better car problem solver than you are a segment producer. Flattery will get you everywhere, Gabe. Ah, that must be Ben Young. You're in capable hands. He'll have you fixed up in no time. God, I hope so. We need to get to Melville, and we're already way behind schedule. Hey, Mr. Mailman. Uh, come in here for a second, please. Uh, excuse me. Duty apparently calls. Uh, happy travels. Ach, unser Freund. Sounds like there's an emergency. Uh-huh. Hey, I'm new here. All of a sudden, I have to check in three people at once who want their own rooms. Separate but close to one another, all equipped with TV VCRs. And, well, long story short, I need to reach Emily Weiss, stat. I'm guessing the local post guy would know where to reach her. I happen to know her home number by heart. It's 555-8039. Thank you. 555-8039. Come on, pick up already. I'll just leave the parcel here on the counter. Bye. Hätte ich auch mal Danke sagen können. They're already gone. Mighty fast towing there, Ben. Ich kann mich nicht daran erinnern, den Wagen da abgestellt zu haben. Egal. Ja. 
So, da müsste ich doch noch ein Päckchen im Koffer haben. Mach mal auf hier. Part and Parcel. Der Postmann ist da. Yes, I understand, but Maureen said. Does it really matter what Maureen said? I can't help that her orders have been delayed because of the snow. She should have just ordered sooner. It's not like New Year's Eve appeared on the calendar out of nowhere. That's true, but it was only two weeks ago that she decided to throw a celebration at the diner. And once we're sure we can host a proper party for everyone, you are also invited. <sighs> That sounds an awful lot like blackmail to me. Please come to my party, Nancy. But first, hand over a football team supply of cheesy dip, quiche, and sloppy joes. <laughs> I'm sure she didn't mean it that way. And I'm sure you're more than welcome either way. But I have to run now. Bye, Nancy. And hi, bye, Thomas. Bye, Kay. <sighs> Marine Hennessy strikes again. Pio would be a boring place without her. Boring? Drama-free might be the word you're looking for. One thing's for sure, she does not know how to run a business. Always bites off more than she can chew. And now I'm supposed to come to the rescue? Isn't this a great opportunity to generate some extra revenue? With the ridiculous discount she's demanding, it's mostly nothing but a great opportunity for a lot of extra work. Anyway, is that parcel for me? You can just put it on the counter. All right, since you asked so nicely. Mal wieder eine sehr nette Unterhaltung hier. Ich bin weg. It isn't Connor Price. Oh, that's him, huh? He's taller than he looks on TV. Let's hope he's in a better mood now. He was really quite rude to me earlier. Wow, sounds like a real jerk. Hello, Mr. Price. Still fuming, I see. Well, hey there. Good to see you, man. Ah, uh, yeah. I guess smoking is a slightly healthier way to blow off steam. Especially since we've had a bit of change of plans. Oh, uh... Hi, ma'am. I don't think we've met. Uh, Connor Price, KNW6. <laughs> Welcome to the Oregon Trail Motel, sir. Better get to work, honey. I'll see you tonight. Okay, what's up with her? Christmas hangover? No, it's just that I told her about our earlier meeting. Oh, I see. Yeah, about that. Uh, listen, I'm man enough to admit that it wasn't my finest hour. I'm usually a lot more easygoing. In fact, the Willamette Week once called me one of the most likable faces in local broadcasting. Well, my grandma used to say that it's easy to be nice when everything's fine. Staying nice when you're under pressure it takes a bit more effort. Aha, uh -huh. well, when my car isn't breaking down during a tight shooting schedule, I'm a pretty swell guy. Believe me, that's the price guarantee. <laughs> so, you're obviously not in Melville. Ha, no, that's the change of plans I was referring to. It turns out we need some parts that the garage doesn't have in stock, so Young's having them shipped over ASAP. But in the meantime, we've decided to stay right here in lovely, picturesque, whatchamacallit, USA. It's Providence Oaks, P.O. for short. 
Yeah, well, to be honest, all these little villages look pretty much the same to me anyway. See, we're supposed to be shooting some remotes on local end-of-year festivities and such. A grand kickoff to our special series on small-town American life. And it doesn't really make much of a difference if we start here or in freaking Melville. Except, of course, that Providence Oaks is way nicer than frickin' Melville. I was gonna say, this town has warmth. I like warmth. And so do our viewers, I'm betting. So get ready for your town to be featured in part one of The Oregon Trail. Ahem, <laughs> title pending. Might be a little too on the nose. I hear there's some sort of computer game with that name now. Though I don't really know much about computers, that's more my daughter's area of expertise. See, this is what I'm talking about. Real conversations with real Americans, right? But as fun as this is, I should be turning in. The three of us each got our own quaint little room. Mine's non-smoking, unfortunately. Still beats Gabriel's. His doesn't even have a TV. Can you believe it? Yes. I think I can. Anyway, great banter. See you around, my main mailman. Bye. Was für ein Riesen... Egal. So, da die Pfeife jetzt gegangen ist, öffnen wir mal unseren Leseschrank und lesen ein Buch. From 1912 to 1948... Hm. Architecture was an Olympic discipline. Ja. Man konnte sogar Gedichte rezitieren. Spanish used to be a professional goalkeeper. When recovering from a career-ending accident, a nurse gave him a guitar so that he could recover the dexterity of his hands. In learning to play, he discovered his musical talent. Mit diesen fröhlichen Anekdoten aus der Welt des Sports endet die heutige Episode. Ich danke fürs Zusehen, fürs Zuhören. Macht's gut. Bis bald. Tschüss.